shows us the gone live and sometimes it goes live here just a few minutes before. Yeah. Welcome folks, it's Tuesday at 7. Hello. You guys <laughs> recognize Carrie because Carrie's been on Tuesday at 7 before for special effects, but this is exclusively yeah. <laughs> her week, her week. But we're gonna just chatter, I think, here for a couple minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna share it on my page real quick. Yeah, I think I tagged oh, you. there we are, very nice. And so, as folks who have watched in the past, you guys realize that when you share this video, your name goes in a drawing and you get to, uh, a chance to win a, actually, let's, let's just show that now. We'll show it again sure. later too, but. Tell us, uh, tell us about this uh, this photo here. Yeah, okay. so uh, this print How's was... How's that look there? Look good. Angel. Get up there. Cool. <laughs> Sorry, I was sharing. Right. Very good. Perfect. This print is from um, the look that I did for the Face Awards 2018. Um, and it was for the challenge that was called Power of Makeup. Um, so I actually struggled with this challenge quite a bit. And um, I eventually came, came up with this look. But... Um, I kind of just went back to the primary colors and wanted to do mm -hmm. half glam but also leave half natural on it. And then I had a bunch of words in the background that I painted on a big poster board. Um, and they're just really empowering words. So it was supposed to be a powerful look and kind of express makeup in a free way. So, gotcha. Yeah. So we'll have a signed, signed photograph that'll yeah. be available. Again, we'll draw this next week next week for everybody who shares again we know there's probably some folks jumping on here you're early <laughs> yeah um if you're seven o'clock uh you're you're right on time but we know creators sometimes bounce in after the fact i know i'm drinking my seven o'clock coffee <laughs> is that what it is yeah <laughs> yep got some coffee to power me through the night <laughs> you know what's funny is we should probably do a like what are you drinking at your tuesday at seven because sometimes Ooh. somebody's drinking like a uh, beer and it's in a koozie and you don't know it <laughs> Sometimes, like last week with Jim, I was drinking green tea with some honey, and I'm like, I'm just gonna chill because Jim has that that effect. And so <laughs> today, I'm just drinking funny. some ice water because uh, this might be uh, a long, <laughs> a long interview, especially if people are gonna be asking questions. Yes. Yeah, I'm looking for some questions. Oh, I'm yeah. excited for that. Yeah, and so for those folks who are joining, mm -hmm. because every week we get folks who join new, this is an interactive session. And so as you sign on, if you toss out a question as we're kind of talking, we'll stop every handful of uh, minutes, every 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and we'll take questions. Yeah. So it becomes interactive. Again, if you share it, and if you press that button on, the, I think it's the bottom left-hand corner, mm -hmm. you could share to your friends list. You could share to specific people. You can also share to a group if that, uh, if that makes sense. And sitting here in your studio, studio your yeah. studio is also AJ and Beth. So they're behind the camera too. You guys can't see them, but they're here and gonna, participate as uh, our, live, as our live audience, live audience. Our studio yeah. audience. Oh, before we, before we move on, mm -hmm. everybody who shared that interview from last week, last week we had Jim Cermak. He's a podcaster. He's a marketer. He's an author. He does all kinds of stuff. I mean, he really is a jack of, a jack of all trades. Yeah. But if you haven't caught that, episode yet go back and watch it for a couple reasons one is one of the things that i think we all struggle with as creatives is kind of that starving artist mm -hmm. you're trying to uh, maybe shed that that skin and i think we're, we're all caught up in in creativity and uh to be grounded back in the opportunity for like sales mm -hmm. principal <laughs> marketing those things that that allow us uh, to bring some value to what we do is what Jim brought to the, yeah. the table last week. Yeah. Jim, thank you for uh, for joining. Oh, and he's got a great podcast too. He does. Yes, Trade Show University. Trade Show University. I'm a new listener, and I love it. Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of people out here that are getting ready for Trans World and mm -hmm. Midwest Hunters, and those are all trade shows. Yep. Um, even. Even things that Jim you... Jim just came on. Oh, Jim. How Hi, you doing? Jim. Jim, you uh, have not missed the, the drawing yet. But anyways, everybody who shared last week, your name is in this uh, in the hat. And Carrie, ah. if you would draw. Pressure's on. Yeah. 
excited. You get to pick okay. the, uh, the super winner. Got it. And we've got Sam White. Sam Yay. White. Congratulations, Woo. Sam. Love it. We will connect you and Jim. And you get to spend uh, an hour. Sam is local here as well, and, and Jim is uh, not terribly far from where you're at, Sam. So that'll be a, a great connection. And again, thanks, Jim, for for connecting. But we're in your studio, and I uh, I usually start off with a, a question and just kind of break the ice. Um, do you live in a madhouse? <laughs> Some would say. Yeah. <laughs> No, I am, so I actually live at home. Okay. I'm with my parents right now. Um, I went to school mm -hmm. at Kent State, um, got my entrepreneurship degree. Um, so I was out of the house for four years, and I'm back home saving money, figuring out life. <laughs> um, and I'm lucky enough to have this space. Um, it is, now that you see, yeah. a little bit smaller of a room than you would expect. Um, but this is the room where I do all my creating. Um, I have a huge makeup table over here and storage beyond belief. Um, and this actually used to be my bedroom. Um, and when I asked my mom if I could paint it all white, she thought I was crazy because imagine waking up to a bright white room. Um, but it was the perfect solution to just take my pictures in front of the white wall. So. Um, it's been really a really great space for me to do all my work in. Yeah, yeah. Something that uh, that I'm already aware of, but people may have caught, they may not have caught, and that is, so you're, you've graduated from Kent State, yeah. but your major was in art. No, yeah, that's something people ask a lot about. Yeah. Um, you would expect me to have been an art major, and I'm someone who... I, I never want to stop learning. I know there's always more to learn, but I figured I have the creative side down um, for my work, mm -hmm. and I, I kind of thought that the best way to grow further would be to get that business background um, so that I can turn my passion for art into a career, um, which is what I'm working on right now. So... Yeah, it was, it was really cool. Um, Kent State has an amazing, amazing entrepreneurship program. Um, I've stayed connected with a bunch of the professors, and they genuinely care about you and your business. So however much work you put in, they'll put in for you too. Um, so I did the whole program there, focusing on Makeup Madhouse the whole time. And I also entered a pitch competition there um, my senior year, so it was the best way to close out my, uh, my time there, and I ended up placing third in the competition, and I took home uh, $2,500 um, for my business, and it all went right back into my business, and um, I've been able to use that to do some things I probably wouldn't have spent my money on otherwise, so. Oh. So, so what exactly what is a pitch competition? Yeah, so um, there were a bunch of different students who have business ideas. Um, there was a food truck. We had a couple people who had app, apps that they wanted to create or were creating. Um, and we were all in the stage of our business where it wasn't just an idea anymore. We were all making revenue or trying to make revenue. And um, we it was pretty much like Shark Tank. Um, except we had months of prep and training and different judges critiquing us and helping us. Um, so we ended up doing a five minute pitch and, um, yeah, yeah, the room was like Shark Tank. It was really intense. The lights were all on us and it was really cool. It was a great experience. Yeah. 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 For those uh, who are joining now, we're with Carrie Esser as she goes by Makeup yeah. Madhouse, right? And how long has Makeup Madhouse, that, that moniker, been something you've used? Yeah, um, it's funny, my, my name when I started doing makeup started out as Studio 1997 Photography, which is a mouthful. Um, <laughs> and a couple years later, this was in high school, um, we had an assignment in my economics class and we had to create a product or a business so I, or a service, so I did my makeup business, um, and at the time I was also entering the talent show, and I was going to do a song with my girlfriends called Madhouse, so 
I got that project and that song at the same time, and it just it just kind of came together. Um, so that was 2014-ish, um, and then I became an official business in 2017. Fantastic. Yeah. I didn't even know that story. Yeah. Like, Yo, did you know that story? I did. Yeah. You did? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I bring so. it out every once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> so. it's, a, it's a good one. Yeah. So let's rewind. Let's rewind back to early days, early mm -hmm. carry days when, I don't know, I mean, it could be pre-elementary school, it could be elementary school, maybe uh, even latter years, middle school. At what point were you like, uh, this, this whole creative thing is kind of mm -hmm. where my energy and my passion lies, or this is what I really enjoy? Um, I think it had like a, de a big development over time. I did everything crafty growing up, getting into different art and um, polymer clay was a big phase of mine for a couple years. I, I sold little sculptures that I created. Um, and I also did a lot of singing growing up, um, which you guys know about. So I think a lot of it was just for fun when I was little. I was also in sports, so I had some competitiveness in me there. And then once I kind of dropped the sports and found show choir, um, I, I really took the creative side of me and ran with that, so whether that was on stage or once I started getting my hands in makeup um, and I was still doing canvases and stuff like that. So I, I think it definitely all starts from when I was little, just every other little craft I would try and do. Um, and then, yeah, show choir really put me in an environment with other creative people. And um, it was so much fun because I ended up painting all the girls who were in show choir. And we did little photo shoots and everything. And, um, yeah, that really kind of brought it closer to where we are now. Um, but I've had art in my life like forever. From the, from yeah. the very beginning. Mm -hmm. A few weeks ago, those who watched Joe Bergner's interview, and there was a whole bunch of people yeah, who watched that one. Yeah. She had she had mentioned that the competition, uh, competition with herself as well as just in competition, just saying I always had to do something new and fresh and and mm -hmm. that, that was very important in her development. It sounds like yeah. your early days of sports may have yeah, no, it's interesting. I've done, who I did softball, dance, volleyball, track, gymnastics was a huge part of my competitive career. But um, I, one of the, I get to create something new every time I sit down. Um, so it, I do have that competitive spirit in me. Um, and yeah, yeah, I think sports were great growing up. But once I kept doing the same thing over and over, I was like, okay. Yeah. Time, to, time yeah. to move on to something yeah. else. So, for those who are in the audience, we've known Carrie for quite some time because she grew up in, you know, kind of the same, the same years as our kids. <laughs> and we knew from early on that you were a doer because I think that uh, we saw those early... Those early clay. sculptures, those early Kim, plays. Came home with little sculpey yeah. <laughs> bears or something, little animals. Yeah, for sure. But what other... Before you moved into kind of the makeup, was there other painting, or was it was like your was the skin, the body painting your first experience with paint? Um, no, I I did um, canvases mm -hmm. when I was little, and well, not little, little, but um, I would doodle a lot, a lot of drawing. Oh, and before I ever started with makeup, <laughs> I would come home from school with Sharpie from my fingertips up to my elbow. And my mom was never happy about that. <laughs> but um, I always forget about that. And I would come home and she was not happy. But I guess that was kind of the first time where I was putting art onto my body mm -hmm. before I got the right tools to actually do it. Um, <laughs> so I think, yeah, I did canvases and doodling and stuff like that. Tell me, so you've got all, all those different things. And then one day you're like, oh, let's, I'm going to start to paint faces and paint bodies and yeah. create these looks. When was that? How did that occur? Let's talk about that transition. So I think some of the earliest ones that I did were around 2013 um, when I really started playing more with makeup. Uh, so this was early high school for me. And... Um, I did a little bit here and there, mm -hmm. just with eyeshadow, eyeliner, some of the basic things. 
Um, and it was my junior year in high school, so 2014, um, where I did my first more like a body paint type look. Um, so I did a half sugar skull on myself for Halloween mm -hmm. and wore it to school. Um, I had thrifted a dress and it was just a $1 easy little dress for my costume. Um, so all the focus was on the makeup and I had practiced it a couple times before wearing it to school. Um, but yeah, I just remember everyone loved it and I had such a thrill of creating something and getting so many great reactions and positive feedback on it. Um, so after Halloween was over, I kind of kept doing it. I started finding other makeup people online and getting inspired by them. Um, and one of the things that's interesting for me, um, since I am completely self-taught, I, for the first whole year that I was doing these body paint looks, I was only using my fingers, um, eyeshadow, and eyeliners, and like basic makeup things. So for a whole year, um, I didn't have body paints, and then finally I was like, okay, I'm going to buy these and put some money into it. Um, so I think me being self-taught in that way helps me to do things differently now that someone who would have been trained from the start might not yeah. think to do. Yeah, it's very hands-on. So Those early looks, when you look back at them now, <laughs> are you like, wow, I mean, that, that was that was the birth of something great or were you were you finding success really early on i mean i, I know there's success Ooh. right because pe pe people look at it and go wow that's that's amazing which yeah. gets you to that next look and and such but as you look back what are some of those self-observations oh yes no um so i i at the time mm -hmm. loved everything i did i thought it was the coolest thing ever and then now i look back at them and i'm like oh carrie what were you doing <laughs> there's a couple looks in there that are pretty rough but some are better than others um and i just kept going i i wish i could go back and like ask myself why because i i know now how passionate i am about it and why i love it but um to be able to remember the first few that i did and like how i felt doing it um, would be really interesting. So, yeah. What did you find happened when you started to um, invest in body paints, right? Because you, you all of a sudden you were you went from using your hands and mm -hmm. uh, beauty makeup, right? Right. To body paints and where where did that go from there? Yeah. Um, for me at the time, that was a big leap to take mm -hmm. because especially it being a hobby at the time um it was a couple not a couple hundred dollars a little over a hundred dollars and uh being in high school that was like a big purchase for me um but i i found that i was able to do a lot more a lot quicker which was cool um and do designs that were more complex rather than just pushing eyeshadow onto my skin um and I remember the first times I used the paint, I uh, used two tutorials from a girl, her name's Made You Look by Lex, and she she was a part of my inspiration in the start to actually buy the body paints. Um, but yeah, so I used her two video tutorials and did them along with her, and then after that I was like, I'm free, I'm on my own, I'm comfortable. Um, so I started doing my own designs and uh, again, was just pretty self-taught from there. Oh. And you moved from fingers to, to brushes. To brushes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I do everything hand painting. So any of the work that you guys see out there is, uh, pretty much all hand painted. There's probably like less than a percent that I've touched the airbrush for, which I do have an airbrush mm. and I do have to have Matt teach me one day <laughs> soon. I'm so awful. I'm so, I literally have it sitting under the desk there, but, um, yeah, I, I love painting by hand. I love doing detail work and building up color and layers and, um, just playing around and making cool things out of some paint. <laughs> you, you paint on yourself yes. the large majority of time, right? Yeah. And yeah. so when people click into your page and take a look at your work and, and your journey from, start to where you're at now mm -hmm. 
for the most part, most of those looks are, are you with, with a brush mm-hmm. and body paint, right? Yeah. So it's funny. Um, a funny story with that. My, we share a lot of this art with my family and my grandparents. And, um, a couple years ago we were showing new pieces to my grandma every once in a while. And, uh, eventually she was like, wait, is she wearing a shirt? After we've been showing her so, so many, my grandma had no clue that it was all paint that whole time. She thought I was clothed. Um, so, I mean, that made me feel good yeah. because I don't want that to be the focus of the art. Um, I want it to be about the painting. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's nice because then you just have more skin to be able to paint. It's just a bigger canvas. Um, but yeah, it, it took a leap too to be able to do the paints just up here than to utilize the full body. Um, and I am doing them on myself, so it's, it's like a nice relaxing time for me to get away from whatever I'm doing. Um, but then there's also a lot of training that goes into it. Uh, for example, writing words in the mirror, everything's backwards. So I had to train myself how to write the alphabet backwards on myself. And it's actually a lot of fun. You feel really good once you get it done. <laughs> but sometimes you'll catch a letter that's flipped the wrong way. And then you got to <laughs> fix it. And yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> so, about that. yeah, for, for those folks who are sharing, we're going to uh, put your name in a drawing for next week. Same. Carrie has already autographed. Sam White just came on, if you want. Oh, Sam White, by the way, oh. you won the uh, the Hour with Jim, and so we're going to put the two of you in touch. Yay. Sam White's been sharing stuff forever, so I'm so oh, glad that, you, that uh, your name got pulled here. Uh, and Sam will probably share this as well, and if you do, you'll have the chance to win <laughs> an autographed picture by yeah. Carrie uh, next week as well. So you're, you're learning, you're self-taught, you're doing a lot of tutorials online, but you're photographing this mm-hmm. progress and you're putting it out there mm-hmm. and, uh, and people start to watch. Yeah. Um, I started posting my work on social media mm-hmm. right away. Um, and it was cool because at the time with social media, a lot more people could or- organically see your work. And so I kind of got in there at a good time where I was able to start growing pretty quickly. And um, definitely if you go down to the bottom of my Instagram page, you can see where I started. I, I purposely leave my work on there so that I can go back or people can go back and see it. Um, so yeah, you can you can see the progress that years of hard work make for sure. Um, and one of the looks that I recently did was specifically to show this progress. Um, and Matt actually gave me the idea to do Iron Man. Um, and I knew I had already done it. And there was also a contest that they wanted you to do a then and now look. So it all just kind of came together and I was like, all right, I'm gonna do Iron Man. Um, but I'll be sharing that look soon of my 26, 20, yeah, 2016 Iron Man and my 2020 Iron Man. Um, and I'm really proud to see the progress from there. It's really cool what a couple years can do. The 287 group, I shared that out there. Oh, so good, if you good. saw that, the, yeah. the then and now, yeah. those were, that's a great progress that mm-hmm. you're talking about and that we're, that we're seeing. Yeah. And that's, just, that's a voting, right? Yeah. So... I, this is my first time entering a contest on their website, um, and I was unsure if it was based on voting or what, and I emailed them, and I asked if it was public vote or a judge, and they said a judge, so I don't know if the votes just help them to see your image, but for anyone who voted, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm always asking for votes for different things, so I always appreciate the support. <laughs> Very grateful. There are... There are many platforms out there and you guys are way more <laughs> adept at, at that than, than we are. What is your, what do you think is your preferred or your home platform where most of your work or most of your followers are at? Yeah. Um, Instagram is definitely my home platform. Um, I have 15,000 followers on there now, which I'm very, very proud and grateful for that. And they are all awesome and very loyal. Um, but Instagram has had a big downhill um, 
they changed their algorithm, so nothing's just chronological anymore. Um, it's very difficult for people to see your posts. So that's something that has been a little bit of a challenge for me, but at the same time, it's uh, allowed me to really remember and focus that my art is for me and for the people who do care about me or who are able to see it. Um, I'm not just putting it out there for social media or for likes. It's it's uh, my art is not about about that. It's a right. it's a nice thing to have. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Instagram's been my main platform, and. Aside from the, the likes or the social media aspect of it, it's a great place to where I have all my work shown on there um, from start to now. Um, yeah, so it's a great log for me to really go through and see everything. Yeah. You're on Facebook and Twitter, you, a little Twitter, bit. YouTube at all? Do you have um, a... Yeah, I do have... I'm starting to post more videos on YouTube. Um, I think I might have one or two thousand subscribers on there um so i'm trying to post on fridays now and i've been able to do it for a little while um whether it's tutorials uh i did like a boxy charm unboxing um i tried on some different wigs that i got from amazon so just different things um i know a lot of people ask about tutorials or seeing time lapses of my paint so i'm trying to do a lot more of those um and then yes facebook also i have Makeup Madhouse by Carrie on there. I try and post some updates on there, and I'm trying to do a little more on Twitter too. But social media is just a whole world of things that you either have to commit to it or kind of do it, and it's just a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a strange thing for me because it's not something that I grew up with, but showing your progress, posting early pictures or having somebody go into your Instagram account and scroll the bottom and go, okay, mm -hmm. here's where Carrie started and kind of here's her progression. Um, that's pretty, it, I would imagine that's probably pretty revealing, right? Is it kind of show your work, yeah. uh, both the good and the bad and, and maybe some good comments, maybe some bad comments. Have you had any of those experiences? Um, I've had some bad comments sprinkled in, mm -hmm. um, which I, I definitely, I definitely, um, take criticism mm -hmm. and I appreciate criticism when it's told in a respectful way and when it's yeah. meant to help. Um, but when there have been those few negative and nastier comments, I usually just get rid of them and get it out of my mind. Um, because, you know, like... Being an artist, it's great to have critiques and have people help you. And, um, yeah, that's just another way to grow. But when it's done in the wrong way and it's meant to hurt you, then I just say, hey, bye. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. For those who have questions, uh, we'll take questions. Are there any questions out there? Um, yeah, there, there are. Let's see. Let's see. Well, there's a couple comments. So Mackenzie Catron. Ah, hi Mackenzie. Says Carrie is seriously my favorite I person love you. in the whole entire world. <laughs> so, She's so incredibly aw. talented and one of the kindest people you'll ever meet. You are so sweet. So um, I want to talk about her yeah. for a second. Yeah. Mackenzie is my friend from Arizona. Oh, is that who, who you just visited? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so her mom uh, messaged me on Instagram. She and I had been friends for almost five years now, strictly on social media, never met in person. Um, she does amazing, amazing body art also. Mm -hmm. She does beautiful, detailed pieces, and her work is just amazing. Um, so, yeah, her mom messaged me and was like, hey, I want to fly you out for Mackenzie's birthday. So, AJ and I went to Arizona, and I got to meet Mackenzie for the first time ever, and it was just the coolest thing and such a great experience. Um, but if anyone wants to see more of that, I have a video on my YouTube, and she has one on hers of our whole trip together. Um, so, that was really cool. The art that you did together, the sunset, that was, like, stunning. It was, it was a dream. It was stunning. so much fun. And we got to... Uh, take some pictures. AJ took some pictures for us uh, with the mountains in the background and it was just a dream. Cool. It was so cool. Um, James Harmon says hello. hello. So uh, James from Mummy and the, the, Mummy Monkey. And the Monkey. He's yeah. watching on the road. Hello, hello. And then hey, James. Mark Ferran 
What was your favorite early look makeup that you did that that wasn't body paint? So more just like before kind of starting I had out the makeup. paint. Yeah. Um, there were a couple I did that kind of stick with me pre real body paints. Um, I had a Hunger Games look that I did where I had a cute little eye makeup and then I did the bruises. Um, and I love Hunger Games and I had the little Mockingjay pen. So I liked that one. And then I did one with my friend Nadia and um, I did myself as Iron Man and I did her as Spider-Man. So this actually is my third. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah. I remember that one. Yeah. Um, this this is my third Iron Man now. But yeah, I did that one with her, and that was all just with the eyeshadow, um, and that was 2014. That was with the eyeshadow. That was with eyeshadow. Good. See, you wouldn't you Good wouldn't know. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And then Mark also asked, um, in, what are inspirations for your makeup? Movies, artists, uh, what kind of that makes you say, oh, I want to do something with that or from that? Yeah. Um, that question always changes for me. It, it depends a lot on the season. Usually it starts with that. Um, winter, I'll do colder looks. But then if I'm in the mood to bring some warmth, then I'll warm it up and do something springtime. Or um, sometimes I'm inspired by different music. Uh, I did like the Shawn Mendes album cover once on myself um, and it, I don't know it just really depends sometimes like today I, I just kept thinking of um, the color yellow so I knew I wanted to do something yellow today and then I saw my flowers and there was green in there um, so my process is always different how it sparks um, but a lot of times it has to deal with like the current time, how I'm feeling, what the weather's like. Yeah. That makes sense. Do you sketch them out or do you just grab the brush and start to paint? Um, a lot of the ones recently I have not been sketching. It's like today I didn't sketch yeah. this out. This was a quick one for me. Um, but a lot of the ones that are more intricate or complex mm -hmm. or more design based where it's Lot, got a lot of crazy things going on. I'll sketch them out and they usually turn out better when I sketch them <laughs> for the most part um, So it's always interesting when I don't sketch them to see kind of just what unfolds How that plays out. Yeah, what about redoing the looks? Have you done the same makeup three or four times to Get Shift the... it to a form to evolve or to fine tune um... it? Or is it kind of like one and I did it and I'll take photos and move on to something else? Yeah, uh, I guess there's been the couple that I have redone. Um, I started doing the Seven Deadly Sins in high school. Mm -hmm. And I had done that one in group photo shoots every other year for a couple years. Um, and then I had also done like an annual group Christmas photo shoot. Um, where I would paint up all my friends and we would take pictures for the Christmas season. Um, and then I guess just like the Iron Man, how I did that a couple times and that's really shown some progress. So sometimes I redo them, you know, yeah. yeah. And, and sometimes when I, I'm not feeling inspired by something, I'll go back into my old work and that kind of helps get my mind going a little bit to see, oh, I liked that technique. I want to incorporate that or, you know. There's... Beth is your... Yeah. Um, Jessa Donich says, um, I'm sure this is a difficult one, what is your favorite product to use? So I guess it would depend on if you were going painting versus makeup. Yeah. Kind of. So uh, body paint, uh, Mayron Paradise paints are my number one paints. Um, I use them 90% of the time uh, and they are fantastic. They're all water-based. And then for makeup... Right now, my favorite eyeshadow palette is the James Charles uh, Artistry palette because it has like every color and they're super pigmented. But I also love Juvia's Place eyeshadows. They're very pigmented, lots of colors, and they're not expensive. So I have lots of different products that I like. <laughs> yeah. When, and, and this we had connected um on a special effects project uh i guess it was over a year ago year and a half ago ish 
But what I didn't realize, and it, it makes sense, but looking <laughs> back, I'm thinking 15,000 followers on a platform on Instagram for you yeah. has some advantages. And, and it, I was like, oh, that's it's cool uh, you have a lot, but it has its advantages. And yeah. so um, talk about that. Yeah, there's there's a lot of great things that come with. Now I I love all my followers as right. individuals and them being there and a support system, but having the number there does help a lot for um, things that come to the sense of business right. um, or looking for PR, free products and stuff. So um, once your numbers do get a little bit higher, you can start seeing some benefits like that. So um, I've been able to connect with some different companies. Uh, and one of them we've worked with is Colored Contacts, and I use them all the time for different looks. Mm -hmm. um, and they they'll usually send me some free lenses, and I can use them in my looks and help tag them and promote them. Um, and we've used them for our Cynthia. Right. Um, so that's definitely a big benefit, uh, and being able to get PR and work with different brands um, because it's really hard to get people to notice you. Um, when when you are a little bit smaller out there but if you put in the effort you can still do the same things if yeah. you reach out and stuff so that is a great benefit um and i'm glad i started growing earlier before instagram kind of switched over um and yeah it got a little stagnant there <laughs> i i remember too that we were talking about a specific model for that gen xyz oh, yeah, look yeah, yeah. And, uh, and i was like well I don't know if I know anybody that mm -hmm. quite fits that stature or, yeah. or that look. And you're like, oh, I'll put a call out for models out on your Instagram and we'll probably have a whole lot. Yeah, we got time. some responses within the next day. Um, and then from there, I was able to ask uh, a couple of them, hey, do you think you'd be okay being casted and everything? And that kind of weeded out a couple more and then we found Nikki and she was like do whatever you want put me in any makeup we're good to go so yeah it's it's a great way to be able to reach out to a lot of people um, and it can help you get different resources and things and network with people yeah so as I was thinking Rolodex right kind of old-fashioned oh, what are my what's my network look like you're calling up your your network yeah on a yeah. social platform and and not only was able to uh to find sponsor for you know color contacts mm -hmm. but also for a, a call out for a model, model and, yeah. and, and everything and that's that's foreign to me because that's not natural <laughs> yeah um, yeah but as your as as your skills are improving from the very beginning you you're you're gathering some followerships then there's some competition that this starts to occur. <laughs> I was waiting for that part. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, so so all of a sudden, now you find your competitive spirit, you find your skills, you find your platforms, and now you're you're jumping into um, some competitions. And I imagine that's, that there's a, there's a whole lot of mixed emotions jumping in competition because you... Uh, there's probably certain looks and there's probably certain things that uh, gain favor and, mm. and other things that don't. So uh, talk about that. I mean... Yeah. Competition in the makeup world is very interesting, mm -hmm. especially when it's uh, online only or with a brand. Um, trying to think of... Let's see. So, so I, I started out by doing some smaller competitions. Um, there'd be makeup artists out there who I knew who mm -hmm. would be hosting them, and those were a lot of fun. Um, everyone supported each other, and it was really cool, and you would win some prizes. And um, I, I remember I lost a couple of those, and I was okay with it. It was, it was good. It helped me grow. Um, and every once in a while, I would get a second place, or I would get a first place, and it was extremely exciting yeah. um, to have your art recognized by other talented people um, and then I found um, a big competition called the face awards and I'm sure some of the people out there have seen my posts and uh, seen things shared around when I was doing that so I entered that early 
2015 for the first time, which not many people know about. That was a not so great right. entry for me, um, and it's kind of buried <laughs> in the past. Um, but then I found that I was ready to enter again in 2018, and um, that competition, I ended up getting chosen to be in the top 30, and um, that was out of thousands of entries. It was a pretty well-known makeup competition, all online, and it was one of the most exciting things for me because that was when I was like, wow, I really did it. I'm really playing with the big dogs now. Um, so, yeah, through that, you find a lot of artists who are really cool and you can connect with people you didn't meet before. Um, and I was definitely able to do that. Uh, and then in 2018, I ended up moving from top 30 to top 20 to top 12. And then if I would have made it one step further to top six, I would have taken home $15,000 and gone to L.A. So that always stings just a little yeah. bit. Yeah. But <laughs> um, it's hard for those kind of branded competitions because they're doing it for marketing. So they're doing a lot of it based on public vote. So when you have 10,000 followers and everyone else has over 60,000 followers or 100,000 followers, that's where, you know, you can reach out to the community and you can go out and put flyers and you can make posts and do everything, but you know, there's only so much you could do. Um, and I decided I was not going to enter mm -hmm. again. And then 2019 came around and guess who entered? <laughs> um, and I made it again into the top 30 and I, uh, my friend Mackenzie also made it. So we were both in that competition that together. It was really, really exciting. And she, she even says, she says, being in the face of words was equally fun and ruthless. So <laughs> Yeah, and um, I don't, not everyone out there knows this, but my friend Mackenzie, she, um, she has some medical issues and she's in a wheelchair. So, like, she, this competition took a toll on me physically, mentally, emotionally. And for her to be able to push through everything that they put us through I mean yes it was so much fun and super cool but like she is one of the strongest people to be able to do that so um I I mean I always respect her and look up to her for being able to do that so just like she said there it was so much fun uh really cool connecting with people we got so many great prizes thousands of dollars worth of makeup um <laughs> which is phenomenal but also you know they put us through a lot um, there's a lot of waiting, a lot of pressure, um, and you're doing it all from home. Yeah. So you never really get to communicate or talk to the people running the competition. Every time we ask questions, they didn't really answer us. Um, so, anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, this year I ended up making it into the top five, um, and that is an accomplishment I will always be proud of. Um, but I'll probably hold back from the competition, beauty, beauty competition aspect for a while. Um, maybe look for some different body paint competitions um, in the future. You go from there. Yeah. And, and I, it, it's, it's well, I was going to say, just because I, uh, yeah. poor John Pass now has asked a couple Ooh, yeah. questions, um, the same question twice. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, will we see you do another monster makeoff at the Ohio Haunters convention in May? And so just because he's asked twice and I felt bad yeah, that he didn't yeah. get a response earlier. So they have not announced another Monsters make-off um, thus and far. And here's, so here, we don't know anything on that yeah, yet. Yeah, so, so we, don't, we don't have the details yeah. on that yeah. yet, uh, John. And um, what I will say is that the team that competed last year, which was Gen XYZ and... Yes. And th that was actually that was actually a real interesting um, team, a real uh, interesting gathering. And, and yeah. what we did is we pulled together some folks of varying uh, uh, decades of age uh, mm -hmm. with varying skill sets, and and we brought them together to compete. But since competing last year, mm -hmm. uh, Gen XYZ has done other things, yeah. and and we already have a couple things that are uh, tentatively scheduled to book this year, and so we're gonna wait and see what that what it looks like here mm -hmm. in uh, in May, and then go from go from there. Yeah. 
But I'll tell you what, last year that uh, the competition at the Mansell Reformatory was, uh, it was great. Oh yeah, we got some killer pictures of Nikki or Cynthia. Oh, that was so much fun. Yeah. Okay, so while we're talking about it, tell us about, because what we're seeing is as we're watching your, your portfolio, we're starting to see special effects step in there. What I, what I mean by that is I'm starting to see some appliance work, I'm starting to see bald caps, I'm starting to see some things that weren't on early on. How does, where, where's that going in? Yeah, so I mean you and Matt have given me a lot more confidence and wanting to learn that. Um, and you guys have been so grateful to take me on board as a student pretty much. And um, so I'm learning a lot from you guys both, which I really appreciate. But I think it's a lot of fun to incorporate s some of the subtle aspects of special effects and have my body paint with them. So like mm -hmm. the bald caps, um, that always changes the silhouette really quickly and it's just a really neat thing to do and an extra space to paint. Um, or when adding the ears onto a look, like the avatar paint that AJ and I did. Um, oh, that was phenomenal, by the way. Yeah, yeah, that was the first time we met my parents, <laughs> was in our <laughs> avatar paint. <laughs> but um, people are always so much more impressed the second they see an, a pointy ear coming off of a normal person. So uh, I think it's, I think... For me, I love learning how to do the full applications, but on my own, I like having the subtle additions. Um, and I think it's a really neat way to enhance what I do even more. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I agree. Those, those subtleties, I think, are taken for granted, whether yeah. it's uh, ears, change the shape of your nose, which changes mm -hmm. profile, right. uh, a bald cap, contacts. Those yes, type contacts. things will completely shift the look and, mm -hmm. and add something to it. But uh, thanks, John, for for throwing out that question. Yeah. Um, where where are you in 2020? Because we, we've been kind of looking back. So what does 2020 look like for for you? Um, it's, it's an interesting time for me because I'm figuring out my direction for makeup, my direction for business and my life. So right now is, uh, it's kind of up in the air. Um, I'm doing a lot of research, figuring out which directions I want to go or I'm able to go. Um, I'm definitely trying to grow my business as much as possible, whether that is with regular makeup, um, body painting, baby bumps, events, or corporate, creating campaigns and stuff with them. Um, so I'm trying to grow in those different areas, but also be realistic mm -hmm. um, since I am doing this on my own. Uh, so 2020 for me, I'm going to keep creating, keep pushing things out there, keep growing, learning. Um, but it's also a time where I'm, I really need to drill down my next big steps in life um yeah and kind of see where things take me but i also need to start pushing to find those things yeah, yeah. tell us about uh, a couple of your unexpected uh um creations you talk about baby bumps right and so you and i know what that is but yeah. some folks out here might go what is she talking about yeah so baby bump paints are so cool they're really fun so if there's any mom to bees out there i'm your girl to contact um so baby bump paint is uh once a mom is getting a little bit bigger a little further along in her pregnancy and she wants to capture that moment um in her pregnancy journey um basically what we do is if she has an idea in mind or has some favorite colors that she wants incorporated in a paint um I, I just go ahead and do a nice little body paint on her tummy. Uh, usually, it, it used to take me three hours to do, but now it'll only take me an hour. Um, and we do a paint, and then uh, I take photos, or she can go to a photographer, um, and then she has those pictures forever. She can show her kid when they're born. Uh, well, after they're born, when they know what that is. <laughs> but, 
but it's just a really, really unique way to capture that part of the journey um, and something really special that uh, moms can have to show their family. So it's a lot of fun. I think we're in a an age where experience and you know that setting these memories are mm-hmm. so important. I think people are like, well, I can buy a gift card, mm-hmm. or I can document this this portion of uh, of birth and yeah. and, and pregnancy. Mm-hmm. What other what other stuff? So baby bumps, mm-hmm. um, your some unique stuff. So I mean, you have some folks who just come up and say. Hey, we want some body painting, or you do body, you do some face painting, some other things around Halloween. What else do you find yourself called to do? Yeah, um, so I've I've definitely had a handful of people who have come to me for no particular reason. Mm-hmm. They're like, I want to be body painted. I want to do a photo shoot, and those are always a lot of fun because we're both just excited to create art together and right. capture it. Um, so that's one of the things I do. The kids face paint birthday parties. Um, so those always get kids excited. They, they love it. They get to be whatever character, whatever they want to be. Um, and then one of the things I've been leaning toward a lot more lately has been working with companies to create campaigns with them and give them content that's really unique and eye catching. Um, so I'm using my art to tell their story or send whatever message they're trying to promote. Um, so that's been a direction I'm really, really pushing lately. 2020, you're keeping just all options open, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm really trying to push certain things, but also listening to what people are saying um, and really trying to take that and run with it a little bit more than I have in the past. Um, so I've had a lot of people ask if I would teach them how to do makeup or um, whether that's regular eye makeup or everyday makeup. Um, And some people want to learn the face painting and stuff too. So I've been starting to take some emails and might eventually start a workshop. So um, I definitely have areas that I'm pushing, but also I want to uh, be able to really do what people are asking and kind of see if that's a direction I should be going to. And in a few weeks, you'll be at WizardCon. Yeah, yeah. So March 6th 6th through the 8th is um, Wizard World in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And this is my first time having a table there or at any weekend long trade show. So I'm really, really excited. I'm going to be selling prints, but also painting people walk-ins or appointments in advance. So if anyone's going and they want to book ahead of time and secure a time. Um, So let's say you're going to be Avatar, for example, and you know you want to be painted. I'll do a head-to-toe paint while we're there. Um, So I'm excited for that. I really want to try and get some people painted while we're there. Yeah. Yeah. Body painting is probably a uh, um, an interesting interesting venture. Yeah. You have have any uh, stories to share? Just, I mean... Because we we've seen Avatar and um, I mean I know that that's that's a question I've I've done some body painting that's often a question that I get they're like how how does that work and I'm like well for the most part model stands out I used to have them hold broomsticks yeah yeah and just kind of Stay, pop out yeah so so things aren't uh, you know getting rubbing. rubbing and and the paint's drying yeah. any anything to share in terms of the body painting anything memorable or just going. Yeah, I got some in there for you. Yeah. Um, so normally it's pretty pretty simple. I mm-hmm. try and keep uh, the person as comfortable as possible the whole time. Um, sometimes they're five, six hour paints. Sometimes they're just two hours. Um, and one of my stories would be about my best friend, Julia. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was one of my first fuller paints on someone. And she was super tired at the time. So I was like, okay, you can go ahead and lay down and I'll just keep working on you. And I look up at her and <laughs> she was asleep on the floor and she had a little bit of drool coming out. And it's okay <laughs> because I tell everyone this and she's fine. But <laughs> so, so yeah, she was so relaxed during the paint that <laughs> she fell asleep. And I love that story. Um, and then another one, I painted a mom and her one-year-old baby. It was nothing super crazy, just some galaxy stuff. It was a lot of fun. Um, 
But she had decided that we're going to do his paint without his diaper on, which is fine. I'm all for it. But someone had to go to the bathroom. So a couple of moments later, I got peed on by the child, <laughs> by the one-year-old baby. And I can't be mad at him because he was super, super cute. Um, but that was also another little body paint story. And, yeah, basically there's nothing to ever be embarrassed about or anything. Anything can happen for the body paints and nothing really phases me. So nothing to ever be too nervous about. Um, I, I think one of the coolest things about it is how uh, liberating it can be. And it's a, it's a great thing to do if you want um, to really just be in your skin and be feel more confident and be able to look at yourself and um yeah it's it's a really liberating thing and i think um a big step for someone or people if they want to take that next step you do a lot of modeling for yourself right mm -hmm. which is now if people are looking do they find that you that you do some modeling work as well it's a model and painter yeah, yeah, I, I definitely like um, being in front of the camera um, when I'm able to, whether that's in paint or even just for fun. Um, so one of the groups that I've been involved with uh, recently, they just kind of started, I think about a year ago, they're called Clee Creates or Cleveland Creates, and um, you can find them on Instagram. And they hold a lot of different events and call photographers, artists, uh, models, makeup artists, and it just kind of brings together a bunch of people who I wouldn't have met pretty much any of them otherwise. Um, so when I go to those, I, I get the opportunity to model for someone else other than my own tripod. Um, and it's really cool to see myself behind the lens when it's someone else's perspective rather than just my own pictures. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For anybody who has questions, uh, we're going to, we're, I think, kind of coming, to, winding down here. You're, you studied entrepreneurship. Is that your, yes. your major? Yeah. What are, what are a few things that, that nuggets of value that, uh, that you walked out to say, these are some of the things that, that I practice. Cause we started talking at the very beginning about how last week you were meeting with Jim Cermak mm -hmm. and the Trace University, and he had some things. And so most people would guess that you're, you're an art major, yeah. not that you're an entrepreneur, but you right. have that knowledge. And, and life is different in 2020 than it was when I graduated back in, in at Kent State back in the yeah. 80s. Um, what are some of the things that, that you picked up to say, these were some things that, that I learned and are trying to practice and apply? Yes. <laughs> so definitely um, learning how to take your passion and turn it into a business is a whole, it's a whole process. Um, but I was able to do a lot of that while at Kent and really dive into all the little details and everything. But there's, even if you're not looking to take your passion or your art and make a multi-billion dollar company, it's a great um, thing to try and find different areas of business or if you're starting a business to look at those and answer some of those questions. Um, like what is your purpose or what would my market be? And just uh, thinking those things through and also learning how to present yourself. Um, one of the things that I was able to practice a lot more was speaking or like my 30 second pitch and things like that. Um, because I'm not a naturally born speaker. I've had a lot of practice by being able to do interviews like this and um, do the pitch competition at school. Uh, so learning how to properly tell people about your work and really try and get your message across. Um, yeah, I think those are some of the things that kind of I took away from the entrepreneurship program. Um, while I was there. And then also just thinking with an innovative mindset whenever you can. Um, I never would have thought I would take my art and try and apply it to uh, bigger corporations or businesses. I always thought that I would just be painting individual people. But as soon as we had that 
switch of mindset, which one of the mentors there gave me this idea and this seed, um, to be able to take my art and elevate it to that next level and work with bigger companies. That's when we kind of found I can do my passion as a business and make more money doing it while also helping other people. Um, so just being able to think with that entrepreneurial mindset can help in a lot of different ways rather than just making money. It can really help you in life and yeah, pursuing your art. Yeah. If there's any questions coming up, Beth, if you could ask those. But in I'm while sure. while you're scrolling, yeah, let's show some of some of your work here. <laughs> Is and, this and, out yeah, there? talk through there. Yeah, so uh, this piece I did years ago, um, and this was one of the first pieces that I did for a business. Um, I, I love showing this one to people. It's definitely one of my favorites. And it is for cystic fibrosis awareness. Um, and the piece is called 65 Roses. So um, the company asked me to incorporate a couple things into this piece. Uh, lungs, a purple ribbon, a yellow ribbon, and to paint 65 roses. So um, the story is actually really beautiful if you look it up. But um, essentially what happened was a little boy was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis and his mom hadn't told him quite yet um, because he was really young. And she was making phone calls, talking to doctors and everything. And she was saying the word cystic fibrosis, um, but the little boy heard it and he walked into the room to his mom and was like, hey mom, what are you talking about 65 roses? So that ended up becoming um, kind of an image for cystic fibrosis or a, um, something that, a story that's told that yeah. kind of symbolizes it. Yeah. Um, so I was able to use that story and kind of incorporate it into a paint for them. And this is you, This right? is me, Painted yeah. Painted yeah. well? Painted this one on myself. And this was years ago too, so this would be a fun one to redo and see how different it is now. How long did this one take? This took, um, this one took seven or eight hours at the time, which is a long time to sit there, but I was also recording video as I did it, so okay. that adds a little bit. I don't know how you could improve that because it's, it's striking <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's awesome. Thank of course, you. you're using black paint, you're taking yeah. a photograph against a black background. Yeah, yeah striking. Thank you. And what else, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of. This guy is a recent one. Um, I'm sure a lot of our artist friends out there know of Bob Ross. Um, so I actually got his uh, video up on Netflix. He has a bunch of his different painting videos on there. And I always thought it would be cool to take his videos and try and do them with body paint. Um, because we had done some on canvas before and they're so much fun. Happy little trees. <laughs> yes, happy little trees. Um, but yeah, so I followed his steps and I did it. I actually recorded the whole thing too, um, and it's on YouTube, so you can kind of see my process and my struggles as I was painting. I was using um, different brushes, and they were really harsh on my skin, and I used the little metal scraper thing for the mountains, so yeah, it's a lot, it was a very interesting process to follow his steps, but on skin. On skin. <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah, so that's one of my new uh, favorite ones. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oops, sorry, so, I just bumped that microphone. Um, so up there I have a skeleton I had done, and that has the black backdrop for the illusion part of it. And then next to that you see the avatar. There's AJ. Yeah. There's AJ. Harry. <laughs> and then if you look back there, um, that was my Killer Queen Bee, which was my entry for the 2018 Face Awards. Um, and that got me into the top 30. So that's definitely one of my favorite looks. Oh. Yeah. And then we love our Knicks. Yeah, all the Knicks. Cred to Knicks. That whole storage is filled with Knicks. <laughs> Excellent. Any, any uh, questions, yeah. Beth? Uh... Questions, comments? Hang on a second. Sure. All right. <laughs> there you are. Okay. Thanks, guys, for, for joining us this Tuesday. Thank you, Carrie, for spending your evening with us. Yeah, and yeah. Thank and you guys live, for coming. Live audience, AJ and Beth. Just a reminder while I'm scrolling mm -hmm. through, so Instagram is Makeup Madhouse. Makeup Madhouse, yes. And you can see all of Carrie's work on there. 
Um, Dakota Truman says, Hello. I love doing work with Carrie. She's always so much fun. She's the best. She's one of the ones who just wants to do a body paint and will do pictures, and she is so beautiful. Um, so we'll probably have one together again soon. Right. Yeah. Sam White asked, is there, uh, who is one person you would like to work with? Maybe even a makeup artist or a model or a company, or is there someone you're like, oh. Um, this is not specific, but I would love to do body painting for a music video, for a celebrity music video. Um, we've seen Ariana Grande's God is a Woman. She was body painted by Alexa Mead, mm -hmm. and I think that would be like a dream paint on someone who everyone's going to see it. I like it. Yeah. Neil Zaza. <clears throat> oh, nice. Maybe we should, uh, Neil can oh, yeah, play guitar Neil, while he's body, body painted. Paint. Yeah, we can send yeah. you out to the uh, out to the world. Oh, Al Tosca says hello. Huh? <laughs> um, bum, bum, bum. Let's see. Todd, oh, uh, Tawny Sayer, who also asked the question about how long that painting took, uh, going back to the NYX Awards, was asking about, do they give you a theme for the entries? And I know that was each one you had to have a particular inspiration that they gave you. So for the entry, there's no theme. You can do whatever. Um, so my, my entry was the Queen Bee, and then 2019 I did like a Dragon Empress look where it was half red, half blue. Mm -hmm. um, but then after that, each round they give you a new theme. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, Caitlin says, um, I want to say how excited and proud I am as how you've grown as an artist. Oh. One of my favorite memories is still that show choir sleepover where you insisted on painting all of my nails and keeping it on until the next school day. You're incredibly <laughs> talented, and I'm so glad to see all your hard work pay off. And I was thrilled by that, too, because she has amazing nails uh -huh. that never break, and mine are horrible, and the fact that you got her to keep nail polish on for 24 hours, I was like, yay. Oh, so, that is so sweet. Thank you. funny. Um, bum bum. Kim Clegg, hi Kim, says, <laughs> is there any subject you would shy away from? I don't think so. No, we'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, body pain is for everyone. Yeah. So. And then, oh, Jessa Donich, when you were talking about how you were using eyeshadow yeah. prior, what eyeshadow were you using uh, when you were doing those complex? Yeah, so I started with uh, BH Cosmetics. I used them for so, so, so long. Um, but I think my step up from BH Cosmetics would be Juvia's Place. Uh, yeah, they're real good. And they're not expensive either. Um, I'm all about that. Yes, expensive products can be fantastic yeah. but i've worked with ten dollar palettes for years and years and if i don't have to break the bank i'm not gonna so Definitely. yeah you can do a lot of the same things with uh different priced products oh yeah i think let me see if i scroll down definitely go through here i mean i, I know sure. you would anyway but there's yeah. a lot of people loving these are great you. questions yeah. I, I love it that's what i was hoping for and you had great questions and this was a lot of fun well folks who are not watching it live i mean you're welcome to type on questions anyways because yeah. we are notified those questions are out there and we can get back to those for new artists mm -hmm whatever their age I mean they may be uh, a freshman in high school right yeah. now that that stumble upon makeup madhouse and like I want to be like Carrie and they start mm -hmm. what are some things that you uh, as we kind of are closing down what are some things some advice that you might provide to new artists uh, who whether it's uh, makeup beauty makeup mm -hmm. body painting whatever what, what are some advice you can share so the first thing that comes to my mind is anytime that you want to start is the prime time. If you're 16 years old in high school or you're 50 years old and you want to start doing makeup or painting or whatever, do it. You have one life, do it. Um, so that's my first thought. And next is, we've kind of talked about this a little bit recently, you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars to get expensive equipment, expensive products. Um, Go to, go to the drugstore, find some colorful palettes, or uh, the dollar store even has paint and things you can use or crafts together. Um, so you don't have to break the bank, so that can't be an excuse to start. Um, but yeah, really just 
if if you go back and look at my day one makeup to my my now, there's so much growth, and uh, all you have to do is start, and then you keep learning, and you could keep teaching yourself or using the resources that are out there. There's so much free free things out there for people to look at and learn from. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Carrie, for joining us. Yeah. You're really somebody who does it. I mean, every single day I'm like, oh, there's more <laughs> stuff out there. And even tonight. <laughs> and for, I feel like I'm not doing enough, so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and even tonight, just for the interview, you're like, yeah. I'll do some painting and take some photos with flowers. If you don't mind sharing that to the, the Tuesday at 7 yeah, group yeah. as well, so they can kind of see the inspiration and, and that look. But uh, yeah. we're, we're happy that you shared your journey and your talents with us. For those who share... We'll, your name will go into a drawing next week, and uh, we're going to have an autograph photo of Carrie and uh, a look that you had from a few years ago. And if you're interested, there is a Tuesday at 7 Facebook group. Yeah. There's stuff that uh, the members, I mean, there's stuff out there several times per week. So if you want to join that group, just go to T-U-E-S, the at sign at 7, and you can go ahead and join that group and then see more of Carrie's work and more of work that uh, that we've had from past past artists and past creatives. We have a lot of folks coming up here. So stay tuned. We don't announce yeah. them too early because our lives are all crazy. And sometimes <laughs> we got to uh, pull one artist out and put another artist in. But uh, the next several weeks are going to be are going to be uh, exciting and unexpected, uh, unexpected creatives. Thank you guys for spending your Tuesday at 7 with us. Yeah. Go ahead and share out and have a great week. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Bye.